Hello, class. This is John Houston, and John Houston, this is my class. This is probably your first meeting with John, and this is a little awkward. So let me just give you a little biography about John. John was born on August fifth, nineteen o six, in Nevada, Missouri, and died on August twenty eighth, nineteen eighty seven, as an eighty one year old man. His father is the actor Walter Houston, and his mother is Rhea Gore. Now John's parents divorced when he was six, and people link this to why John was married five times in total in his life. But who knows? Sensitive topic. Now John dropped out of high school to be a professional boxer, and at the age of fifteen, he was a top-ranking amateur lightweight boxer in California. But he ended the career when he broke his nose. Well, that's not really a bad thing, considering the fact he became a famous director after that. So yeah. After breaking his nose, he got really interested in art, painting, ballet, literature, opera, and film. You know all the artsy fartsy stuff. Also, John worked many different jobs, and some of them include working as a reporter, a short story writer, a portrait artist in Paris, a cavalry rider in Mexico, and all those kind of stuff. He got a little tired after all those jobs, and so he moved to live with his father. He got a few minor roles in off-Broadway productions, and needless to say, it's because of his dad, contacts. And so I believe this is when John Huston's film life starts. In John Huston's film life, he started out as a scriptwriter and scripted films like Murders in the Rue Morgue, A House Divided, Law and Order, and many others. He scripted for about nine years before he started directing his first film, The Maltese Falcon. He went on directing many other films as well, which include Moulin Rouge, Moby Dick, The Asphalt Jungle, and many more. So John got tired, and then he started acting in several films such as The Cardinal and Chinatown. But let's not go that far. Let's just focus on John's directing years, shall we? Directing years. The political or cultural context of the era when John was directing is during and after the World War II. Filmmakers such as film noir blossomed during this era because filmmakers took advantage of the post-war ambience, which is usually filled with uncertainty, anxiety, pessimism, angst, and many more of such sad and angry feelings to make films. This ambience is then reflected in the movement itself, giving the audience a chance to connect with these films. The whole World War Two era, as I said, was filled with themes like betrayal and fear, and many of these films that were produced during the era were produced for post-war disillusionment. Now you're all like, what is post-war disillusionment? Well, this disillusionment is constructed to cheer people up during the hard times of such an era. They were usually propaganda-type films. Now that we have kind of understood the whole ambience of the year, let's move on to film noir. Film noir. Film noir literally means black film or cinema, but in French. This first started when many French film critics noticed the pattern of dark themes and crushed the black aesthetics many American films had after the World War Two. Now, what goes through your head when I say film noir? I'm sure they are along the lines of distrust, bleakness, alienation, evil, corrupt, paranoia, moral corruption, ambiguity, violence, and so many more of these dark themes. What about the images and the look of the film? I believe they are like crushed blacks, guns, detectives with long black coats looking smart, streets wet with rain reflecting shop signs, shadows on the wall, and I'm gonna tell you, all these make up film noir. Film noir is nothing without the theme of gangsters and crime solving. John Huston directed Key Largo and The Asphalt Jungle. Both revolve around the movement of film noir. These two films talk about crime. Key Largo has crime themes in it. The Asphalt Jungle has crime themes in it. Just that Key Largo mainly is about murder and counterfeit money, while The Asphalt Jungle is about robbery and murder. Both of these films have the characteristics of film noir, which aesthetically are the shadows, the crushed blacks. But the main characteristic of film noir is the theme it carries. The theme film noir carries revolves around crime, murder, backstabbing, distrust. All in all, it is a very dark theme due to the era it was in. 
Shadows are a huge part of film noir and are in fact influenced by the German Expressionism. Do you remember The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari? I'm sure you do because you weren't sleeping during that film. The similarity of the high contrast images, camera angles and lighting is high when compared to film noir. Here in Maltese Falcon, the first film John Huston directed and also the film that defined film noir uses many shadows to play around with the nature of each individual's character. Also the film plays around with trust and you don't know who to trust when each new coming character pops up. You don't know what's going to happen. Are they telling the truth? Are they lying through their teeth? The use of shadows can really bring out the possibility of how dark a character can be. Another characteristic of film noir is the camera angles. A lot of wide shots and low angles are used. They are used to bring out the tension and also to heighten the suspicion and mystery of the scene. Deep focus is used a lot in film noir as well. This makes sure everything is in focus and the audience can choose what to look at. For example, in this scene of Maltese Falcon, you can choose to look at all three characters while they are arguing. This heightens your sense of suspicion, wondering who you can actually trust. Something I find interesting about film noir are the main characters of the whole plot. For example, the protagonist in Maltese Falcon, Sam Spade, works defying the laws, opposing the police, and is psychologically hurt and morally ambiguous. He's alienated from the world, filled with greed for money. Also, he's a corrupt in the sense that he has an affair with his partner's wife. When his partner is being murdered, there's no slight hint of sadness on his face. John always plans the aesthetics of his film, probably because of his portrait painting job in Paris. John takes into consideration the hue and tint of his films. For example, in Moulin Rouge, a rich, happy and playful ambience is to be created. Therefore, John used coloured filters and used smoke on set to create that ambience. In Moby Dick, Houston took effort to desaturate the colour of the film. Another example is the African Queen. The green jungle is captured so richly so as to bring out the look of the film he had envisioned in his head. John Huston's films mainly consisted of human nature. A specific theme can be noticed in many of his films. That is the idea of a group of people with a common quest which may or may not result in failure. A film that John Huston used to explore that concept is Moby Dick. A ship of sailors goes out to fight and kill a whale, but only one person of the entire crew survives. The Roots of Heaven is another film which is about a group of environmentalists who wants to save elephants, but in the end, many people die. The Misfits. A group of friends goes to search for horses to make money from, and the group of friends goes crazy about one girl, and the whole objective of the film from start is not accomplished. Here, John Huston is using film as an art form to express his views about success and failure. Many critics comment that John has no film style. You might question that, but let me give you a list of film genres John has done. He has done thriller, detective, mystery, literary, classic, dramas, social and environmental issues, psychological biographies, comedies and musicals. Now tell me that is not a wide variety. John Huston is a director that is not afraid to put himself out there to the world, using film as an art form where he can express his fears, his goals, his ambitions and ideologies and I think that is great and I think that is what makes a good film. When directors and scriptwriters are not afraid to put themselves on the line, stripping themselves bare to use those raw emotions or thoughts to translate that into an art form like film, they themselves are producing something that they are passionate about. John Huston does well in that and I respect him for that. Also, John Huston has done many films where they are not received well by the public, but he still goes on to make more films. I believe that is something that people who want to succeed must have. If you wish to succeed, you shouldn't be afraid of failure because it is bound to happen at least once in that journey. If you ask me, John Huston is an unappreciated director. This is probably because his films were indie or hipster, not mainstream. He often directed films because he felt the need to direct them and not because of financial profits. 
actually, maybe the reason why he's an unappreciated director is because of his lack of distinctive style. Or maybe both. So you may ask, what else is so great about John Huston? Why is he such an iconic person in the world of film? Well, after researching about this director, I personally feel that I took away some of his beliefs in filmmaking. The first is pre-production. I always believe that pre-production is important, but John Huston takes this to a whole different level. Imagine this, actor Michael Caine, who worked with John Huston on the set of Escape to Victory, said, Most directors don't know what they want, so they shoot everything they can think of. They use the camera like a machine gun. John uses it like a sniper. This is something that many people observed as well. John plans his shots wisely and makes sure it hits the target, which is the look of the film he wants or the reaction he wants to bring out in the audience. For example, during the pre-production of Maltese Falcon, John Huston sketched out his shots like canvases of paintings. Remember how he was a portrait painter? John Huston actually used that skill in his pre-production, but instead of a still portrait, it was a moving portrait. Pre-production is everything. When actors come down for shoot, they are just there to help you produce the film you have been seeing in your head. There's no reason why you should waste your actor's time on set thinking if you should use hard light or soft light, red or green or any uh, decisions you could have made during pre-production. Alright, class, you know John Houston. John Houston, you know my class. I hope that you guys would get along better. And this meeting, I guess it wasn't really awkward after all. So, yay!